that's my main objective, my main goal was to help people change the way that they think, is to help people change the way that they think. And I'm, now I'm going to tell you this, Jonathan, you don't have to think like me. I just want you to think like mm. me. I decided to think, and that's what changed my life. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. Welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And man, you all know we, we, we always get exciting guests, man. But I connected with this brother and I, I just started finding out more and more about him after I heard him speak. And after I heard him speak, I was like, man, he, he, got, he got some insight. I was like, I know he got something to share. So we're, we're going we're gonna to get to today's guest just, just momentarily. Uh, but, but before we do that, I want to just lay it out and let you all know Uh, The purpose of Beyond the Ball is to focus on stories, strategies, and successes to ultimately help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Man, so so in the virtual studio today, I have uh, I I have a guest, and and he he does so many things. I'm just gonna name off a few, and I'm I'm gonna go ahead and and welcome him, you know, to the stage. But he's he's not only just an actor; he's 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 an author, he's an athlete, inspirational speaker brand ambassador, philanthropist, man, my brother, Stevie Baggs Jr. Stevie, welcome, brother, welcome. Hey, bro, peace and power. Thanks for the hospitality. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir, uh, yes, you, sir. As far as the intro, man, you, you hit it on the head. The main thing I like to tell people is to be an octopus. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is an octopus has eight limbs. Mm. And but, but an octopus, you know, so it's eight, that's like eight different streams of income or eight different things that you can do to, to fulfill your purpose. But then the uh, octopus also has uh, nine brains, nine brains, and mm-hmm. then three hearts. So, so if you look at it like that, if you, if you get my heart broken, if I get my heart broken, you know, by business or by relationship, I got another one. And then if I come back, and if you try to kill my mind or kill my vision, which stems from my mind, I got an, I got another one. So being an octopus is very important in, inside of what, what you do, and that's, that's how I look at it. And so um, consequently, consequently, when that happens, man, um, in life, it, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus to, to, to do that. But I've been able to kind of make it work for me, um, and so I share it with other people. Man, man. Where, so where so where did you develop this mindset of like just how you just shared that with us just about like you know like the, the octopus I almost want to call it the octopus mindset but where, where did you develop yeah. you know this, like like this type of mindset to where you know you you believe that that you were capable of doing all these things well I remember being a, you know a student athlete at Bethune Cookman and you know I was a I was a I was an above average student you know I had above a three three point oh um, I was involved in extracurricular activities but then the other thing was that I had, I was involved in football. You know, Mm -hmm. football was not an extracurricular activity. It was literally my job in school or my work, I should say, in school. And so I was like, well, man, if I can work a night job during spring break, if I can go to study hall, if I can go lift weights, if I can go to class, and I still got to go perform on the field, if I could do all this stuff in school, I can do different things. When I'm, when, I'm, when I'm out of school, you know, and so that gave me the, the insight to know that I had balance and I had diversity, even though I was still focused on, you know, the two main things, which was my degree in football at the time, I still was, was building other skill sets outside of that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so de- de- developing the skill set is, is, is one thing. And, and then you going out and having the belief that, you know, it, it was it was even possible. Like, can you just talk a little bit about that, Steve? Because I mean, don't, I mean, developing the skill set is, is, like I said, is, is one thing, but you know, but then there's the fear, then there's the potential adversity, and then there's you, just the unknown. Yeah, yeah, I think I had a, a bit of a dynamic um, advantage, even though I didn't look at it at the time as an advantage, because playing pro football, which is the only sport where the contract is not guaranteed, it puts you in a position to, if I got cut, released, or traded, which I did a number of times, you know, I'm the only pro football player 
to play on 11 teams in 10 years. So when I was doing dealing with that energy, it put me in a it put me in a position to where um, I was forced to go garner some business acumen, and I was forced to not be afraid of something not hap- not you know not prevailing or not succeeding. Because, hell, I was playing football, and that didn't succeed at times. But I still knew I had the gift. I still knew I had the ability and the talent to do it. So I just never gave up. Man. So that's the same That's the same kind of drive that I took into uh, – that's the same kind of drive, excuse me, that I took into business and into other endeavors in my life. Um, and, and, it, and like I said, it's working for me. And it doesn't mean I don't hit my head, and it doesn't mean that I don't have to – you know, learn lessons along the way, but it means that I'll never give up because if you have the ability, if you have a vision for something, I always tell people, you gotta, you gotta fulfill that vision because if you don't, you're not, you're not making your dash count. And making your dash count means that it's the year you was born, it's a dash, and it's the year you die. Mm. If you don't, if you don't make that dash count, that's your fault. You can't blame that on, oh, I'm scared of business, or my mom didn't give me, or my dad didn't, or I grew up in this environment. Like, all those, all those ancillary things, outside things, excuses, are just literally tools to keep you in bondage for the rest of your life. Mm, mm. Yeah, Make bro. your dash count. Yes, sir. Make your dash count. Make your dash count. Ooh. You got to leave here. We got to leave here with our dash so full that you go to the grave empty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My dash is full. And I go to the grave empty because I, I exhausted myself in the work, in the in the purpose, in the mission, you know. And so people are like, man, how you do so much stuff? Because my purpose is bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? This this thing is this thing is not about. I can sit up in a nice house, drive a nice car, and and go coach football for the rest of my life, and not have no worries. Coaching high school football, making six figures. I I could literally do that. But hold on. There's there's a mission that's bigger than than that. I'm I'm trying to help people go to the Super Bowl in the game of life. Mm. See what I'm saying? So that's why I wrote the book Greater Than the Game because I was trying to teach our people how to be greater than the game that society's playing on us. How to be greater than the game of of not recognizing the importance of your health and wellness, of your economics, of having balance in your consciousness. You see what I'm saying? Being open to receiving truth instead of holding on to a tradition, being open to receiving righteousness instead of holding on to religions and, and doctrines that were given to you by somebody who never had your best interest at heart. That's my main objective. My main goal was to help people change the way that they think is to help people change the way that they think. And I'm, now I'm going to tell you this, Jonathan, you don't have to think like me. I just want you to think like mm. me. I decided to think. And that's what changed my life. So, yeah. Man, Stevie, I'm about to throw this phone, man. <laughs> man don't throw it, bro. Don't throw your phone, man, unless you got the insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, man, man. Wow, wow, wow. Man, so- well, I'm, it, 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 I'm just thankful, brother, that it's connected to you. Because there's a difference between communication and connection. I could be talking to a lot of people, but if it doesn't connect, then then I'm just you know I'm just babbling. It's like the Tower of Babel. You're just babbling alone. Like you can't. There's no connection to to for you to be able to apply what I'm saying in your life, and hopefully mm. help you do something bigger, better, and different. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that that's that's beautiful, bro. Man, I think that's really anyway, heavy. Oh no no yeah. no! Go ahead. What you got? What you got? No, I was saying I didn't. I, didn't, I was saying I wanted to interject that before you went to your next point. That's all. Oh yeah yeah man. I mean I think it's it's just amazing that that we're in a time right now where there is so much information, but still if like if your mind isn't right, then you can't apply it and you can't you can't get the res- whatever result you think you're desiring. Man, I I, I just was telling this. I did a live last night. <clears throat> And we kind of were talking about economics and finance and fitness. And I said that we don't die from a lack of knowledge. We die from a lack of applying the knowledge. Mm. You know if you run a red light, you're going to get hit. You know that. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, if you don't apply that principle, you're going to get hit. But if you, if, you, if you know it, I mean, if you don't know it and you run through it, of course, you didn't know. But we don't die for a lack of knowledge because it's a lot of things that we know. 
we die for a lack of applying it. And and I even I even put myself on a on the score for that because at the end of the day, I'm not talking to you as a person who's flawless, bro. I'm just talking to you as a person who is focused on per- my purpose. You know what I'm saying? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm 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 not flawless, but I'm I'm focused on my purpose. And at the end of the day, if you're not if you're not living your life like that, like you know, and and not doing self inventory, you tripping. Like a lot of people don't want to do self inventory. It's always somebody else's fault. See what I'm saying? But when you do that self inventory now, now you got to lock in on on the thing called I in. And I and I always talk about this. We we we're so used to looking without, brother, that we never look within. Mm. And what what do I mean by that? Imagery, a degree, bank account, what school you went to, what house you live in, what kind of car you drive, what how your wife looks, all these different things. What fraternity you was in, what group you belong to, all these. Huh? <laughs> Stop looking without, and look within. Because the most important things in the world start with I N, in, in, uh, understanding, integrity, mm-hmm. intellect, intimacy, inspiration, insight, insecurities. All these I Ns are very important because when you find your true intellect, when you try, when you find your true intimacy, when you tr- when you find your true integrity, what can somebody do with you? Because I, I, now I can stand on what I stand on without outside energy interfering with my vibration. That's powerful. Ballers, we wanted to make sure that you all took advantage of this opportunity. That's right. This episode of Beyond the Ball is sponsored by our new book that we just dropped, Completely a Free Resource. And the book is entitled Seven Ways You Can Effectively Support Your Student Athletes for Career Readiness Post-Graduation. That's right. Seven ways that you can effectively support your student athletes for career readiness post graduation. So be sure to take advantage of that resource. You can go ahead to the website, go to bit.ly forward slash the number seven ways you can. That's right. bit.ly forward slash seven ways you can. Take advantage of this resource completely free. Download it for yourself and pass it on to a staff, a student, or even a coach that you know serve and supports student athletes, they will get great benefit. Now, back to today's show. Man, man. So how do you so how do you do self inventory for yourself? How, how, like like what like what what does that look like for you? If somebody out there don't know, you know how how to how to start with that. What does that look like for you personally? For me personally, it's, it looks I, I look at sitting still. I, we know when we're vibrating on a low on a low frequency. We know when we're not doing the things necessary to reach the vision that we have for ourselves. We know when we're being distracted. So, and then if you don't know it, then you have to ask whatever source that you go to to give you clarity on how to find out how to get there. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You know, if you don't know how to get there, go to whatever source you call on to find out whether you meditate, whether you pray. Whether you go ride your bike, like like me, that that's one of the re- ways I stay centered. I go get on my bike, I ride like 200 miles a week. You know what I'm saying? Another way I stay centered, I sit my behind still so I can hear from the creator instead of just listening to all the noise on outside and the media, whether it's television media or social media. Media stands for multi-ethnic destruction in America, in Africa, mm. in Asia, in Australia, Okay. At the end of the day, if we continue to be distracted, we will always be destructive. Like, see, I just got distracted, right? Some passed me. I looked up. And if I'm texting and driving, right, and I look down, and then I look back up, the destruction came because I was distracted first. Mm. So we'd be so distracted on what CNN and Fox and social media are telling us that we end up being destructive. It's easy. Man, 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 man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. So so would you just, I mean, just with everything that you do, where would you say that you find the most fulfillment? Because like, like I said, we're we, we talking about you, 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 you acting in movies along, alongside, you know, Will Smith and, you know, you, 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 
in, in, in focus and, and being on TV shows like Star for Better or Worse, A Match Made in Heaven. Like, I mean, where, where do you find the most fulfillment in like all, all of that you're doing and everything that you have done, at least up until this point? That That's all the stage. That's all the bridge. That's all the, the draw, the magnet. That draws people in. But what really makes people stay is you them feeling your genuine passion about what you're saying and knowing that at the end of the day, I'm giving it to you as real as I can because not because I'm on some pedestal, but because that's what that's that's what real people do. You can feel when somebody just giving you a lunchbox speech as opposed to when they really, really care about what they're telling you. Mm-hmm. Not even from a point where I'm yelling at you. Well, well if you want to do this and you got to do that. No, I'm not yelling. I'm just passionate because what I'm telling you, I really, I really stand on this. You know what I'm saying? And so the TV, the NFL, the CFL, the movies, all that stuff is great. But no one's going to remember you for how much money you had. They're going to remember you for how you impacted the lives of the people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Just, now, that's just real. Yeah, 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 for sure. So talk to me a little bit about philanthropy. And, 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 and talk with me a little bit about C-E-T-A. Talk, 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 talk to me a little yeah. bit about, about, about just about how you're, how you're creating empowerment through autonomy. And talk, talk to me a little bit about that. Yes. So CETA Foundation is a nonprofit organization that my mom and I started in Florida 18 years ago, bro. My mm-hmm. rookie year in the league. And as soon as I left Bethune, we started. My, now, however, my mom had been doing work all that time. She used to take young girls from an orphanage in Orlando and bring them to the house and teach them women's etiquette. Mm. And so CETA grew from that to now, you know, we have nine after school programs in the city of Atlanta. We're, we're working on other partnerships in surrounding counties where we're teaching young people everything that they won't get from the educational system, credit, uh, health and wellness, uh, self-worth and self-love. You know, mm. and, and we teaching these young children things that they're going to be able to use for, forever. You know, you'll never learn about credit in school, but they're going to learn at Cedar Foundation. You'll never learn about the proper foods to eat for real in school, but we're going to teach them that. You'll never learn about Halal Salasi or Mansa Musa in school, but we're going to teach them about Mansa Musa so they can see some themselves as not only uh, just a slave, they can see themselves as royalty. It's a different mindset when you do that. So now I, I'm not just a slave. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. And then where did the concept come from for the CETA Foundation? Like, what, what, was what, was your mom always big on philanthropy, or or how, how, how yes, did this come yes, about? She, she was, yes, she was, and and I didn't recognize that I was too. It was just innate, you know. When I was at Bethune, I was I was going to speak at elementary schools and middle schools and high schools. Because I, because I was all American at Bethune, and then I was one of the more articulate guys, so they used to put me out there to go speak, and I didn't recognize how rewarding it was until I recognized how rewarding it was. I'm like, oh my God, this changed my life. And then I didn't know I was planting the seed, but one of the seeds of what I was doing, one of the arms of my octopus was being planted at that time. I didn't even know it. Hmm. And now I speak. I've I've been all over the world, bro. South Africa, Paris. Uh, I've been. I spoke at Oxford University. I, I mean, I spoke. I spoke to Clemson football team the last two years, two seasons. Mm. Now, let alone uh, uh, almost every HBCU in the nation, I've spoken at. After planting those seeds, you see what I'm saying? Like that's the thing that that gives me the most drive. And I'm and I'm only 38 years young. You know what I'm saying? By the time I'm 50, come on. And that's why I tell people. Like, look, don't allow your age, don't allow your, 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 whatever you, whatever you think your shortcoming is. If you have a gift at something, you better not allow that to stop you. So from the TV, the, the, the film, the speaking, the books, all that stuff comes back to making a bigger platform for CETA because CETA is a health and wellness nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Our main passion is health and wellness because you can have all the money in the world you can have all the uh, all the education in the world but you if you do not take care of your temple then you can't even enjoy it and steve jobs and uh steve jobs died at 56 years old he had nine billion in his in his in his estate and he couldn't pay somebody to take away his disease that's 
that's why stewardship over your health is very, very important. Listen, listen, I just want to tell you, man, thank you for doing what you're doing to help athletes look at life beyond the game. You know what I'm saying? Game, I'm going to leave you with this acronym. Game stands for gathering amongst man every day. And the way you play that game, the way you gather amongst man or men, women or men every day, will determine if you go to the championship or determine if you have a losing season. But every day you rise, you have to learn how to gather amongst man every day and maneuver in that system to, to be able to, to evolve instead of revolve, to transcend instead of descend. So, man, once again, my brother, peace and power to you, and let's stay connected. Uh, I appreciate you, my brother, most definitely. Hey, hey, look, Ruthless comes out every Thursday on BET+. Plus. I'm playing the role of Oliver, y'all. Got to check it out. It's out right now on BET+, Plus or Amazon, or Apple TV. Look for Ruthless, all right? This is Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. Thank you.